Okay, we have our two another integral. We've got the integral from zero to two of x squared, fourth root of 16 minus x to the fourth dx. Okay, the first thing I notice here is that inside the fourth root, this is to the fourth, 16 can be written as two to the fourth. I did this earlier with a u substitution and that was okay, but also notice this is in pretty good shape for a trig substitution, just kind of looking at what we have here. So what I want to do for this for my trig substitution is let's just call x squared equal to four sine of t. I've created that four there in order to work with the 16. But it's doing this, you'll just notice to make it clear for our x to the fourth value, this is gonna be 16 sine squared t. But let's also get a value for x just because I wanna make my derivative easy. So if we take a square root on both sides, this is gonna become two square root of sine t. So I'll go ahead and we'll differentiate, get our dx value. So here, I'll look at this as sine to the one half in order to use power rule. So when you do that, half times two gives me a one in front. Then we're gonna have sine minus one half and then chain rule on sine t, derivative of that's gonna give me cosine t dt. But then cleaning that all up, I'm just gonna write this as dx cosine t over square root sine t dt. Now, one other thing, let's just take this value here and isolate our t just to make the substitution easy. So you can divide by four, you have x squared over four, take arc sine on both sides, and we end up with t equal to arc sine of x squared over four. So now we'll just go ahead and substitute this. So first we'll take our two and plug it in here. Two squared is gonna give me four over four. Arc sine of one is that pi over two. Then plugging zero in here, arc sine at zero is just zero. Then for our x squared value, what we have is four sine t. Let's take the four up front just to get rid of that. So we're gonna have sine t, uh, this whole thing here. So we still have a fourth root 16 minus x to the fourth. So this is gonna be 16 sine squared t. Dx is gonna give me, I'm kind of running out of space, cosine t dt, and we have this square root of sine t over here. But now we have quite a bit of simplification we can do. Like first, right here with this 16 minus 16, we can factor 16 out of this and write it as one minus sine squared t. This is all within the fourth root yeah, I know this is kind of a mess, sorry about that. So when we take the fourth root, um, when we break it up, we take the fourth root of 16, we have this becomes a two. We have our fourth root, one minus sine squared is cosine squared t. So we'll just write this as cosine squared t here. But then rewriting again, cosine squared to like the one fourth power by exponent properties, we can write this as cosine to the one half t. So let's take this value and put it back into the integral. But now from here, we can really clean this up. I can multiply this two out front of the integral. So I can draw an arrow there. So it's got to two times four, we'll have an eight out front. And then we can consolidate these sines and cosines. Like first, with if we have sine, just sine to the one here over one half sine, I can write this as sine to the one half t here. And then multiplying these cosine terms together, we end up with cosine three halves t. And now at this point, we're in really good shape to use the beta function on this integral. Okay, so we have our formula over here to the right that we can use to calculate this, get the whole thing into a solution in terms of the gamma function that hopefully we can simplify pretty nicely. And we've got, we've got a pretty set up here with sine and cosine, we get the same bounds. Now, in order to use this formula here, we're gonna to need to find, the most important thing we're gonna to need to find is this C1 and C2 value. So we just need to manipulate this exponent a little bit. Like, so on the sine, our exponent's one half. So we're saying two C1 minus one equals one half. So we can, we can just solve for z1, adding one on both sides, we have a three halves here, dividing, we have our z1 value equal to three over four. And then doing the same thing with our exponent on the cosine, we're saying two z2 minus one, using this is gonna be equal to three halves. Adding one on both sides, this is gonna be five halves. Divide by two on both sides, and we have our z2 value equal to five over four. And then we're almost ready to do this, but one last thing I want to notice, we got this two in front here, and here we have an eight. Well, that's really easy to fix. I can just kind of rewrite this integral. We'll just write this as four times two. So that way everything here is going to be used with the formula. So going right to the formula, what we're going to have, we'll have a four out front. And then for all this, we need to just plug in. So we're going to have gamma of our Z1 value. So we're saying gamma of three over four times gamma of Z2. So we want gamma of five over four, and then we want gamma of the sum of the two, 
Adding these up, you get eight over four or just gamma of two. Now we'd like to go ahead and simplify this. For positive integers, it's actually pretty easy because the gamma function can be related to the factorial. So we can use this formula on this and say that gamma of n plus one is the same thing as n factorial. So using it here on this for gamma of two, that's gonna be the same thing as one factorial. But one factorial is just one, so this piece here is just going away. So what I can do for this is use another formula, really similar to what we just did actually. For gamma of n plus one, we can use the formula that this is the same thing as n times the gamma of n. So using it here on this value, gamma of 5 fourths, subtracting 1 from 5 fourths gives me 1 fourth. So for that value, I can write this as 1 fourth times gamma of 1 over 4. And we'll just bring all this other stuff down. So then what's going to happen is we have 4 times 1 fourth, so I can actually just cancel that here. And now we're just looking at gamma of 3 fourths times gamma of 1 fourth. But now for this right here, it's actually pretty hard to simplify these individually. We probably have to approximate it. But what we can do together is use Euler's reflection on this, just noticing, you now we can use this in either order, it's not gonna matter, but let's just use this. We'll say our z value equals one over four, and just notice for one minus z, you get back this three over four. So this is gonna work. So just going ahead with the formula, what's gonna happen is we end up with pi over sine, I'll just reverse the order on this. It probably should be the other way anyway but we'll just write this as sine pi over four. But sine pi over four, that's one over square root of two. And so for my final solution of this, I can write this as square root of two times pi. Okay, there you have it. Another example with the beta function. Thanks everyone for watching. Have a good day.